Welcome to the work session for economic development. Hello, Tom. Hey, thank you for having me. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. I think the – do I have the floor? Do I just – Yep, okay, go very ahead. Very good, very good. Um, I think what, what Mark asked me to come and do is talk about the economic development plan that's been in the works for a while, and that's what you have a copy of in front of you. And before we get into it, I think it's, I think it's really important to notice that, note that this is not a final document. This is kind of the result of – Quite a few conversations I've had over the past year meeting with our cities and economic development partners, whether it be LCDC or the Port Authority. Um, but there's still some work to do. I'd still like, really like to get the input of, and, and really the point of today is to find out from you if I'm on the right track, if this is the kind of information that you want. Uh, and if so, then I'll go back to our uh, economic development partners and, and bring the Chamber of Commerce in this as well. I've, as I got into this, I, and they're really not representing this document today, uh, but they really are kind of a, a front door to uh, local businesses and whatnot, and I think they, they can play an important role in it as well. But really just want to know if I'm on the right track, if this is the type of information and detail that you're looking for, and then I'll go back to each of those cities and our economic development partners and have them kind of review this draft and say, what else do we need to put in it? Is there anything that we're overly stressing or not stressing enough or other roles and responsibilities that we can we can all hop in and participate on together. So before we get into the specifics of this, can I ask you just a broad general yeah. question um, on economic development when we started this process <coughs> and we brought you on to the um, economic development de you know, department, separate department, uh, one of the things when the committee we met with, we talked about how each economic development body is going to work and how they're going to work together. So you've got the Port Authority, you've got LCDC, right. and now we've got our county economic <coughs> development Excuse person. Me. How do you see that panning out now that we're about a year in, and uh, uh, how does how did that affect the I, you writing this? You know, obviously I've only been here for a couple of years, but I would I would venture to guess and can confidently say that I think the relationship between all the entities is probably uh, significantly better than it was a couple of years ago. Um, I think we, we cooperate very well. Um, LCDC, the Port Authority, and I, uh, obviously we have no problem talking to, to our city managers and, and, and our cities within the community as well, but the, 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 the three entities, um, yeah, they, they have no problem calling me with questions. I have no problem calling them with questions, and we tend to team up on certain things along the way as well. So I would say those relationships are pretty solid right now. So that's the relationship. What are, have you talked about the roles that are in this, like whose roles are what? Sure. Um, and then also, I think when we had that committee, uh, one of the things that we identified is um, what, what the county considers economic development is not necessarily – the same as what LCDC focuses on. Okay. Their area of expertise is more industrial, yep. whereas the county commission is, if rooftops are going up, that's economic development. If commercial businesses are opening, that's economic development. Absolutely. Because we get a lot of money from the sales tax. Yep. And I was trying to recall what month did you come on? You remember? January. January. Yeah. So a year, two, two years ago, January. Uh -huh. and, I, and I recall that, and I, I recall that we were wanting to get some of these things in place and so we could figure out how yep. how we can work together. Exactly. Exactly. And as far as roles and responsibilities, there is a, a matrix in here, and it, it, this has not changed, but I anticipate when I go back to uh, our development partners that we will probably add some things in. I don't know that we'll delete anything, but probably add a couple of items in and what those are, you know, I couldn't tell you today. Uh, but, yeah, the, the roles and responsibilities, I think, for the most part, we have uh, adhered to that. There's been a little bit of cross-pollination, but it's been it's been willing and uh, supplementary to one another rather than, than stepping on toes, per se. Uh, yeah, on page 11, you have the solar and wind. Uh, 
under renewable energy. Under yes. renewable energy. Would that require Lenmore County to change the policy on that? Right now. Hopefully not. <clears throat> well, but I mean, <laughs> if that's if renewable energy is coming, then you're not going to have wind here. These are just some targets that are currently in the marketplace right now, although we haven't really seen much in the way of, uh, and, and as far as uh, renewable energy, solar, solar is relatively plentiful. Um, as far as wind energy, there is really not a wind farm anywhere near Leavenworth right. County. I think you've got to go quite a ways north uh, and, and west to, to really find one, and I believe, um, I don't want to be held to this, but I believe that there's a topographical reason why the wind farms haven't really sprouted up around the metro area. Um, Although this issue has come up in Douglas County, so it, it is not far from us. Correct. You Correct. know, it's not Correct. like, and we do have portions of the county that probably, probably up in Jeff's district. Exactly. And right now we do have, we do have uh, uh, a policy that limits the height of, of some of those things yeah. and, and setbacks and whatnot. And we don't prohibit them. We so just it's not prohibited. It. Right. right. It's regulated in. Yeah. they can be. I think we have a pretty good policy in place. Yeah. And then uh, on, like, power, I mean, do we know where the electricity providers, where they stand on how much they can provide in this area? Um, <laughs> that, that's actually a great question. We meet with Evergy fairly frequently. And again, right now they're limited, and this and this isn't really a Kansas City area or even a Leavenworth County area uh, specific issue, but more of a nationwide issue of the supply chain to make more power, uh, the goods that go into those power plants, the, the items that go into the substations, uh, is a significant backlog right now. And I think I think maybe I mentioned a couple of meetings ago that you know if somebody decided they wanted to, or if ever you wanted to put in a a substation. Uh, made, it, made that decision today, it would probably be about four years before it would actually be up and operating. So it's a significant lag. Um, and that's really affecting economic development nationwide on certain projects and who gets who gets what. Um, those communities that already have, you know, adequate substations and power, power plants ready to go, they're going to get the projects for a while because there aren't very many projects that are floating around that are willing to kind of fold their hands for four years and, and wait for this thing to be built. Um, so that really is a big issue, and that's one of the things that the uh, business park uh, committee is kind of looking at right now is, you know, where are our primary trunk lines? Where are the substations, and how close does whatever the next thing, you know, if it comes to fruition, where, where, where can it be? And that, that's really probably the main driver right now is, is so access So maybe to under renewable energy we need to have a power plant. There we go. Like a coal-fired power plant? Me. Yeah. Actually, when we were at this summit meet, the meeting I went to, I think with you, Tom, one of the questions was posed is, would, would all of this uh, infrastructure money uh, fund a building mm -hmm. coal fire or gas power plant that was state-of-the-art because there's so much environmentally, there's so much yeah. cleaner right. yeah. than what's currently in existence. And, mm -hmm. and they said that that money could be used for that, but I, I bet you, depending on who's in charge but of the administration, the, the state of Kansas wanted to close two power plants. Yeah, they certainly did, and they actually voted to do it. Then they had to review their decision well, because of Panasonic. Well, I don't know how you close one even without Panasonic. Well, they, they, I, my understanding is they're leaving the Lawrence open for. Until at least 2028. They're leaving Lawrence open, and then I believe they just announced a, a second substation will be built in that vicinity as well to help, help the plant. You, just, you couldn't possibly have a battery plant if we didn't right. have. I mean, that, exactly. that's the uh, it's the ironic thing. You're putting in a clean energy business, but you're going to have to leave the old coal fire power plant up in order to. With that electric, 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 electric cars. And seem, seemingly virt virtually every piece of equipment, you know, under the sun is requiring more power Power now. You know, within the past 20 years, if a plant would open up and they would use, um, you know, a certain number of megawatts, that would be considered uh, high high use, usage. 
now we're talking about gigawatts being used at these facilities. So numbers that, that Evergy and our and utility companies throughout America have never really experienced before, they're having to figure out, you know, how do we keep bolstering more, oh, more power. All the plants being automated. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It does make sense. So there are our counties. biggest issues is, the, you know, the need in this state would be a power plant. And there are counties that when we went to the NACO meeting, uh, there's some counties throughout the country that they have board of public utilities underneath the county, and they do operate power plants mm-hmm. owned by the. Well, I mean, uh, why not county? Well, and, and one yeah. of them got an Independence, Missouri, or something. Yes, like they have their own. Independence, they have their own. Yes. Cass County. Yeah. There is a need. The county would probably make money on it. But I bet the Biden administration would not allow it. Well, that's not going to last too much longer, so anyway. So where are you proposing this power plant? <laughs> Let's not go to the drawing board too far. Uh, I have a couple questions on the... Uh, you stated... Well, uh, I mentioned this to you yesterday, but one of the weaknesses I noticed when LCDC, whenever they ask about bringing in a new business, they uh, have turned away 50%. That was one of the statistics I heard. 50% of the businesses have been turned back because we don't have a railhead or a rail access in Leavenworth County. And uh, I was looking at your economic, uh, where you said weaknesses for Leavenworth County. Yes. I think that definitely should be included okay. as, a, as a severe weakness. And, and, we just, and just to be clear, I, they're, they're not turning away businesses. They're not able to respond to requests for information well, when that's a requirement. Of the thing. So, well, so I, I don't want to paint the picture that XYZ is ready to sign up, and then we say no, you know. Well, but in effect, right I mean, right. I hear what you're saying, but right. in effect, if you needed rail... Right. It can't come. Our assets don't measure up to right. what is requested. So, right. so in, a, in effect, right. we are turning away businesses. Well, you're just not able to. Uh, uh, we're not able to service those. You're not able to even re- compete. You right. can't compete. Right. Exactly. You can't compete. That's exactly. a good way of putting it. Well, so, so anyway, that's one thing I, I was going to uh, ask about. And then. Um, which is ironic because Leavenworth County had more rail than mm-hmm. any other county in the state of Kansas at one time. Yep. Go through Lansing a couple of them. Mm-hmm. A couple of them. Oh, yeah. And agritourism, it almost seems like that's kind of an afterthought. But it looks to me like we have had an awful lot of growth in that area. Mm-hmm. That maybe that's going to be something that's going to... And I may not have articulated it quite well in here, but wherever agritourism, yeah, agritourism, um, I, I really think that's something that we should explore. I mean, countywide, we really don't have, and I'm not proposing that we do, but we really don't have a countywide tourism board or tourism um, entity or way to do that. So I think that's really something we need to investigate, not necessarily creating, you know, an entirely new level of government, but figure out where it can fit in our current system. Now, you um, suggested having a tourism bureau. Would that be underneath the county, or would that be with LCDC or Port Authority, or how would that work? Um, if, if, if you look at a, a lot of other counties, they typically fit within within that county government entity somewhere. Yeah, yeah that's great. Or an offshoot of a chamber of commerce or things along yep. those lines. Those are, those are pretty typical yep. setups. And you, it says on page 7, the county should continue to invest in modern infrastructure, including transportation and utilities, to attract businesses and facility and facilitate growth, uh, how are you looking at accomplishing that? Um, where are we here? Page seven. It's the two, three, third paragraph. I guess. Oh, there we go. Um, really, kind of the same way that we're approaching it at this point, uh, seeking grants, uh, utilizing the funds in our public works department, just in mindful ways. Uh, to really plan for the future. Would there be, what would be a process that we could set that up, like when we're, <clears throat> like some of our projects, run them run them through like like a checklist that we kind of run through? 
for those things? As we, we're we, we could. I think, I think in general terms, we're just really trying to make sure we, we need to make sure that we are uh, positioned and equipped to service not only our residential needs and, and how they travel and, and, and move about the county, but also any businesses that may come to town or businesses that choose to expand uh, within within the county as well, just to make sure that we have a solid infrastructure uh, capable of moving goods and services and people the way that they need. In the next paragraph, you say the county and its partners should identify and plan for creation of shovel-ready sites mm -hmm. that meet the needs of the firms currently seeking large acreages with sufficient utility and infrastructure access. So that is something I feel like that we don't do. Right. What do you mean? We already do. We well, do the have large, Oxy, We have the well, technology yeah. park ready. It's shovel ready. Well, but like if I was going to come in with a large business right now, uh, eighty acres out there, ready to go. I mean, we do. I'm not saying we don't have some, but but I think isn't this the area that they're they're really looking at an LCDC board? Absolutely. Well, as far as as far as any sort of a new business park, yeah, we would absolutely want the utilities at that facility. Not necessarily developed to the point that it limits what can go there, uh, but really just the utilities to the site are absolutely critical in a lot of these decision making. Because because also what we found uh, is not only are the projects getting larger, they're also getting much more expedited. So and, and they the, take a lot of electricity. Absolutely, they take a lot of electricity and gas. Yes. And water. Electricity, gas, and broadband is increasingly important as well. So I know the size of acreage you're looking at. I mean, they're looking at everything 160 acres plus. That's nothing close to a city. So there's no real water that's going to be able to right. be supply a large amount. Gas is very limited. Electricity. Uh -huh. And that's and that's really kind of what the business business park committee is really really dealing with right now is you know most putting the puzzle pieces be, together of what most fits. Most of them tracks of ground are going to be on county roads. So on page nine, you cited uh, a lot of people are still working from home. Do we have any objective numbers that we know um, this that, many people before COVID and this many people after COVID in Leavenworth County? Um, Leavenworth County, I, I really can't. I would I would venture to guess that most of the folks within Leavenworth County are uh, are actually working at the at the place that they work. Not my um, wife. My wife works from home. There you go. And and uses the internet heavily. Absolutely. Um, that that particularly showed up in the office market trend section that you're you're referencing. Um, but generally, I think Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, the Kansas City area has 17 million square feet of vacant office space right now. You move on to a larger city, Chicago has nearly 100 million square feet of vacant office space. So those those folks who have tra traditionally been office users, they've they've pretty much let their folks stay at home. Now some of them are starting to call their employees back, and they're finding that their employees aren't going to come back because they've gotten accustomed to working at home and having their cat on their lap and whatever else they're doing during the day. Uh, but, yeah, the office market's absolutely struggling. I don't anticipate seeing that uh, really turn around. Frankly, I, I, I would project that a lot of those vacant office buildings are going to be turned to apartments at some point uh, throughout the country, not necessarily just around Kansas City. But, um, yeah, a lot of folks are still absolutely working. Now, Jeff collated all the empty buildings Mm -hmm. Leavenworth. Or what was it? Seven hundred. You found one hundred and two. <laughs> one hundred and two. Okay, one hundred and two. Is LCDC or Port Authority or any anybody uh, like working on the? Actually, actually, and Jeff shared that list with me. A, a lot of those are not. Um, a lot of them aren't even for sale. They're just they're just there. Um, so they don't really show up in any sort of real estate database for folks looking around it. At properties or whatnot, but we can certainly most of them downtown Leavenworth. They were for sale for so long that they just gave up. Right. So they, they just used to have a sale for a long time. Yeah. Can't get rid of them. Yeah, they, pay they pay the taxes on because usually they're part of something else connected right. to right. them or underneath of them or right. above them. Yeah. Well, I wanted to back up on something Mike brought up earlier mm -hmm. about the county should invest in. Uh, Modern infrastructure, including transportation, utilities, and all that. Um, so, utilities. So, the county would have to invest to upgrade some of these utilities to get to these sites? 
I'd, ideally, the utility providers or the or whatever entity is putting the, the development plan together would, would fund much of that. Um, but, it, but they may actually ultimately come to the county and, and request help as well. And, and also this says should continue, which I think we're also already doing. Um, so it's not really a new program. It's just keep the eye, keep our eye on the ball that, that we are staying uh, ahead of infrastructure needs and whatnot. And there was some talk earlier this year, well, last, late last year, about uh, Port Authority wanting to go out for a ballot question on economic development. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where's that at? Is that is that happening? Uh, they 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 have a committee that's working on that, and and I think the last I've heard was that well they're still evaluating their options of what they do, uh, but if it would be a ballot issue, I believe it would be a next year ballot issue. Okay. Which they can certainly change, but which I think is a good idea to do it, but not this year. That's what I shared. Yeah, I agree. Well, <clears throat> I'm just saying. I mean. Yeah. Do some of these things, it's going to take fun. Yeah, because we used to dedicate just one mill, I think, to economic development when LCDC was LAD. I think it's how they handled it. Whatever the mill is, that's what they got. And we, we still have a mill that's partially dedicated to economic development, correct, Mark? The county levy is about a third of a mill yeah, for economic right. development related activities. And a mill back then was probably yeah, about a third little, of a mill today. Yeah. Now it's three hundred seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. <clears throat> and then you was asking if somebody would apply for these deals and they'd have to do a checklist. What kind of a checklist were you talking about? Well, I just didn't know how you, how you were going to accomplish like like if you're in order to make that happen. How how are you? Do you foresee being able to? Uh, like when a project comes up, are you going to have a checklist that will come to your office as well, so that you see that these things are being uh, being done or sure. not? You know, because otherwise it's just words. Right. Exactly. So I just wondered how you were planning to make that happen. The checklist I hope doesn't have the uh, parks and trail studies and right. environmental green climate action study. Right. Uh, Realistic, uh, well, that's, that's, that's that what was approved last week, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, sustainable places, uh, yeah. And, it, and that raises a subject that people just might as well know because we don't go down that road, we are not eligible for some portions of funding right. through the Mid America Regional Council. And uh, but the cost would be so, ex I mean. It's really a balance. It's extreme. Right. right. And an example of that, and, and I may have mentioned this a, a few meetings ago, is in September, Kansas City, Missouri adopted a new housing policy, housing energy uh, policy, energy codes for, for all housing in Kansas City. And thus far, it's my understanding that they've received very few, if any, building permit requests since September of last year. Uh, surprise, because surprise, because, surprise, because surprise, of the added yeah. cost of burden, it's very difficult to, yeah, for, for yeah. that developer, that builder, That's to no get surprise. the back out of the deal. So the same people, though, that, that uh, will want to implement all of this, all these regulations, those are the same people that will turn around and say, we just are having a hard time getting affordable housing. So, I mean, you got to have a balance on and, all these things. Correct. And, and while I think a lot of the environmental stuff is, is – uh, uh, very nobly intended, the, the unintended consequence that shows up that, that no one likes is higher costs of everything that that yep. kind of touches. Yep. Absolutely. Um, we talked about, or uh, one of our previous meetings with you was uh, how to get additional people involved in economic development, because a lot of people don't even know, uh -huh. know what's happening. Uh, would you see any value to... Uh, Having a like a group of people, economic development like commission that would be underneath you to kind of be something different from the ones that different from the they'd be different than the LCDC and that they'd be appointed by the commissioners. And I was going to ask some that's kind of the same mm -hmm. long lines. How do how do you feel the environment is between uh, LCDC, Port Authority, you? Uh, Chamber of Commerce. 
I, I think I think I, 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 I think I think we're working pretty well together. Um, and honestly, I've I've only been involved in the chamber for about a year. I attend their board meetings and, and as an ex officio board member. Um, but I really think that there is, and I think they're certainly open to this too. I really think there's a role that they can play in economic development because, again, they do deal with our, our you know, well, their members anyway, uh, which is a wide cross section of businesses throughout the county, and and I, I think they hear stuff first in many cases. So I'd really like to tighten up that relationship and bring them into this document in some form or another. I need to meet with Jen and, and perhaps their board and see where that really fits and what it looks like. Um, but I think the relationship between the entities, you know, from, from where I sit, I think is, is pretty solid. It's pretty solid at this point. I certainly have no problem uh, communicating with LCDC or the Port Authority or the Chamber. Okay. Because that's the part I worry about because, you know, ultimately, you all have the same goal. And right. Your success exactly. ultimately means lower taxes for exactly. the taxpayers. So exactly. So the, the better you guys all get along. Exactly. Better chance. And, and going back to Commissioner Stevens' question, I wouldn't have a problem with, uh, uh, or I'd welcome some sort of a commission, so long as we weren't redundant to the other entities that are already meeting and, and whatnot. I think we need to have a uh, clear directive as to what we are to accomplish and what we are supposed to be. be looking. I think you could get some different. Uh, I know LCDC. They kind of have, uh, you know, the same folks have been involved in that for many years, and you have. Uh, Port Authority the same way, but if you had a, a commission over here that you get a few different <coughs> different people involved, maybe different business people. New blood, fresh ideas. So your next step is, Tom, just is after we get through here, is you're going to be visiting with the other entities yep. about and get their input? Absolutely. And then after that, what kind of time frame do you are you looking at? I don't hold you to it, just an idea. Um, I, I, I think we can probably get together and pull together some edits and bring it back to you guys in 30 days, maybe. I doubt you can <laughs> follow the cities in 30 days. I'm just going to get that scheduled sometime schedule. before the winter gets here. I'm, I'm going to have plenty of time to meet with them. So, I mean, you've, I, I like what I see. It's exactly what we've been talking about. And you put things in place that other communities are using, too, with, sure. with you know, tax Absolutely. abatements and, uh, and those things, the TIS and Absolutely. things like that. But to get their input and just get it back, because I really think we need to have that docket on file when people do come knock and yep. talk and that we can point at it. Exactly. Can I touch base on this idea of a county committee, just so I know if there's something I need to be doing along those lines? Is that okay if I veer off of Tom's policy right now? Sure. And Commissioner Steen brought up the idea of a county economic development committee. Is that something that the board wants us to pursue? You know, I don't want to have a committee just to have a committee. I just, I just like to... I'd personally like to think about it a little bit. I do think there's something to be said for new folks that aren't part of the old guard coming in and giving us ideas or at least working with Tom. So, um, you know, I, I used it out in Lansing for a while, then after I left it dissolved. Sometimes we couldn't get people to come together. But if you get the right people doing it, it's just another thing. It doesn't mean they'll meet every week. Uh, does it probably once a month, once a quarter? But I think what I'm trying to see, how we go about doing it, is get other people, except the regular players, to get their input on things. And I think that's what he's got on page 19. He's got a uh, uh, biannual meeting with residential developer and home builder association in Greater Kansas City. I think that's good. by doing stuff like that, I think that will cover what we're talking about, a committee. And how hard would it be to get people yeah. for this? Well, committee? I just think that... I think this is covered, what we're talking about, you read through a lot of this, um, which I think is a great idea because <clears throat> definitely housing is our strength in this county. Yeah. It's not our weakness. I think that, that that feeds back into this a little bit in that, again, when we started this several years ago, we identified that the county's idea or, or focus is different than the LCDC's, mm -hmm. industrial versus residential and therefore, the committee that they have is that's the LCDC is focused on industrial. That's why you get these projects coming that need rail and all this stuff that yeah. we don't currently yeah. compete well for. Whereas if you had a, a county one, you could focus more on 
so economic development. Well, what do we do? What are we strong at? Houses. Mm-hmm. We're really good at selling houses in, in Lovemore County. So maybe that's the type of thing that a committee could focus on. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and it's different north to south, too. So yeah, yeah. having representation from each district that could, you know, kind of be a bellwether for Tom to run things past would, wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. I mean, it, it's a, hey, maybe in the north end of the county um, they don't want a bunch of residential development. Maybe they Zoning do. Regulations. Maybe in the south end of the county they would like to see the residential development slow down and we focus on some other things. You don't know, but, I mean, that's kind of what you guys do for us. You're that right now. You're that sounding board. Well, I think that's what so we if you, you could continue that or if you wanted that's if you wanted to move forward with this committee, I, I would see it more of a, like Tom said, we don't want to overlap. So yeah. we're not going to put – I don't think you'd want to put a committee together to talk about industrial development. That exists in Lumberton right. County. They've been doing it for a long time. And I think, Mark, that's been the problem with, with, with the cities and county is what their goal is sometimes – Meaning well is not what we're looking at. Right. We're talking about housing. Well, you know what Doug brought up on the thing about the other developers, stuff like that. I just think we need to look at it from a different angle and see what those folks have to bring to the table. We may be surprised. Well, another piece of this could be, I mean, I know you're over there in that office, but like in the planning commission, he has his planning commission he brings things to to kind of vet them. This would give a, a group of people for you to work with that, that could actually kind of be your missionaries out to the different parts of the county instead of, uh, you know, I feel like your office sometimes kind of gets lost back there and, and uh, getting people involved in knowing the county's interested in economic yes, development. Well, uh, our mission, like I said, is different than uh, LCDC Port Authority because yeah. I sat through that deal the other night and they said, well, roads aren't economic development. Well, yes, they are. I think they are. They when are. You build a road and they will I come. know they are. But I, I think they meant it as a point that we don't use our money or our funds to go there. But I was like, book on the railroad. <laughs> right. Well, but then again, they were, involved in our, they were very involved in our transportation study. So I think roads are economic development. We built West Mary so we could build a school. And as a joint effort, roads are economic. You can't get somewhere and they're not decent roads. Who's going to want to come? Especially if you you hard surface a gravel road, you'll see houses. Yeah, that's That's just a fact. Past Liberty, Missouri, what happened when they got connected to 152? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I I just, you know, I mean, I know their mission's different than ours, but I just thought that. And that's not saying anything wrong with their mission. It's just that we look at it a little different. It's it's their specialty. Yeah, I do like I do like Mark's idea about about a group that talks about some of these other things and housing will continue to be a very big deal. Right now it's projected that Leavenworth County's population will increase 35% by 2044. That's just 20 years, and we're talking about another 28,000 people. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> Get the nurse uh, on, ch- on channel 13, on page 13, uh, you talk about uh, in, uh, higher density mixed-use development along County Road 1. Now that that that's an idea that came from Tonganoxy. Correct. Okay. Well, it's interesting because I get all kinds of different comments about County Road One. Some of them don't want to have any development on County Road One. As long as they and then, the problem. Then I get the uh, high density that they want high density development. The city, the, so the city's saying they want to have high density development no, no, along no. I County got Road this, One. I got this data last year from George. Now the next step in this process is if we're good with review the, the format of how this is, is to go back and assure that these things still hold true. For example, yeah. also in here, Baser says they want a grocery store. They're getting a grocery store. They're getting right a grocery store. So there are going to be some alterations of what the cities say that they want more than likely. In this well, I just thought that was interesting. I mean, and the fact is that the industrial park in Tonki has just about filled up. I mean, it's really filled up. I think that statement actually follows our comp plan for the corridor. Yeah. Right. For the County Road 1 corridor. Mm-hmm. Follows. That's exactly what it calls for in a, in a portion of that is well, mixed use development. Yeah, but and and I think that would be if you want to have jobs for for our local kids, you're going to have to have some industry. Well, I think that let's get back to something that the, the state of Kansas put out that study years ago. I've said it multiple times. Um, 
traditional economic development talks about jobs, creating jobs, putting in a Panasonic, putting in a Hills. When the state of Kansas six years ago identified that we don't have enough people for the number of jobs mm-hmm. we already have. Right. And that's where we talked about with with our economic development is why housing is so important. We need to attract more people to live here yeah. before we attract more jobs that are already aren't full. So we are scavenging from current employers. Every time you create new jobs that pay better money, you're scavenging from existing employers. And that's where a a Panasonic has a negative impact in some areas, like maybe in in Leavenworth or or Lansing, let's say. Those employers have these people who are making $20 an hour, and Panasonic's going to come in at 25 an hour or something yeah. like that. And, and have tax that was, abatements. That, and, have, and not have to pay taxes and get breaks on income taxes and all these things. And it pulls those employees from our existing business, yeah. which we heard time and time again, most of your economic development comes from existing businesses. Yeah. So I think that that's, again, maybe a different focus for us in that – why do we continue to incentivize more people to come here with jobs until we have the people here to fill those jobs? And Rooftops. And Baser got a report about 10, 20 years ago saying there was a huge demand for multifamily uh, mm-hmm. apartments and stuff. And have you seen legends lately? Yeah. Thousands yeah. of apartments. A new one going up. up. A new one going up. I saw it yesterday. Yep. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that report was correct. That's throughout. I mean, do you look at downtown, look over by you know. The uh, new soccer stadium is downtown. Yeah. They're putting in multifamily units like crazy. And then now if the Royals actually move down to that area, you will see even more of that kind of development yeah. with multi-story uh, <laughs> Hopefully parking condos type. Yeah, yeah good and, luck with that. And our comprehensive plan calls for that type of development to be in the cities yes. primarily. And But what we've done out in the country in Lower County is we have these country estates, and they're now going at the price tag, what, 450000 an average, was, a pop? I think that was more, I think it's more than that now. I think yeah. it was but I, didn't, I haven't seen the latest average. I think it was like 480 when Bob was in here a couple of weeks ago. So, but that's the, average. Average. Yes. So, <laughs> but that's keeping, I mean, in, in a way, the folks that want to keep the county, uh, country states, and, not, and kind of have a rural atmosphere, uh, that's kind of we're we're kind of doing that by by keeping it the large acreages are out in the country and you may not think two point five is large. There's a debate between five and two point five, but it's really a ridiculous debate. Uh, but they are large country estates. You've got a large property out in the county in Lemoore County, but now in the cities. I know my daughter lives in the apartments behind the library. They're Tonganoxie. They've they are building some of these smaller and duplexes and townhomes and and those kind of things. But but for people to know, we there is kind of a plan in place, and and uh, this has been somewhat thought through too. The people that don't own the property don't like our plan. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and it's really not our plan because it was talked about. I mean, hundreds of people. I don't remember how many. Well, I understand. We, you know, we, but with that plan was two hundred eighty-five thousand dollar comp plan, correct? Yeah, so eighty-five. And I think we've already received our return on our investment by that with the housing that we've done. I think you're right. We're leading the way on that. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Time and again. Yeah. Time and again. So I think that was a good, good investment. And people say one acre. You know, we're not encouraging one acre. We're really not. It's just the only place it's allowed is up around the cities. We, the, our, the comp plan does not encourage that. And really, it should be denser than that. It, it, could, it, could, be, really, it should be yeah. five to six houses per acre. Yeah. yeah. Sewer sure were available. On, on page 16, you say a measurement achievement of objective two, business attraction. A targeted list of companies identified, developed, and met. Hmm? Do we have that? We do not. No, because this is a planning document. It doesn't. It doesn't flesh in uh, a lot of those. A lot of those specific details. This okay. is kind of a charge. I just didn't know if LCDC or if they. If they no, this is the, the, this document's really a charge to go forward and, and fill in the details of, of 
the I think this is probably more okay. us than them. Yeah. Just so you know, that's not a, that's a more us than them. Okay, initiate and respond to inquiries about Leavenworth County, including proposal site tours and real estate research. Would that be done by the, who would, who would be? We're, we're all kind of collectively doing that now. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of depends on what, what type of a project it is and what type of data they, they desire. And at least, at least, like I said, Lisa and I work together. Um, there's some information that she easily has access to, and there's some things that she doesn't, and I assist with those, uh, and vice versa. So, yeah, that's, that's really just kind of what we're doing right now is we get inquiries for properties or inquiries for development, and we, we work together to get those things done. Then on the next page, there's kind of some wide open uh, paragraphs. Initiate and maintain partnerships with Small Business Development and Technology Center, Service Corp of Retired Executives, mm -hmm. and a couple other entities. I take it that's kind of being done now? Absolutely. No, and those are, those are very important entities. Absolutely. And then the next one, create a document for distribution to entrepreneurs identifying area banks, lending authorities, state agencies, and free consulting services to... Right, it'd basically be a, a small business packet, if you will, um, identifying who in the area can possibly help you with your, your small business needs. And that sounds like an LCDC thing, does it? It, it, or, it could well, be. They focus, again, they, they focus really, on the They're really industrial. trying to focus on, this on the industrial commercial. stuff. Oh, so this would be the, commercial. Is that something that the Small Business Association already... Uh, they, 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 not specific to Leavenworth County, but they do have, you know, generalized documents that can help. But, but, but that really is kind of a, uh, an assistance to our local businesses where you list all the businesses that kind of fit in that, like all of our banks. You don't favor any. <coughs> well, we don't have that right now, though. No. So, I mean, that sounds like something really easy to, right. it is to make easy happen. And it is helpful to folks who come in and say, how do I start a business? And then the last uh, one, uh, host an annual small business workshop designed to educate entrepreneurs on the process of developing a business plan, marketing plan, finance plan, and navigating. Yep. That, that's kind of right up your alley. It, it's, it's exactly what we're getting ready to do here in the next couple of months. Well, you plug the state in those two, don't you? Mm -hmm. You bring them in with all the Definitely. available. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, those are all great <clears throat> things, I think. Yeah, they are. They are, Mike. So, um, has anybody looked at that Senate Bill 468? Is there any traction on that bill? Which one's that? Which one yeah. that says if you don't remain revenue neutral, you can't spend I haven't heard anything recently on that. that. I don't think that's going to pass. You don't think it's going to pass? I, I, I haven't heard anything about <coughs> that. But who am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. I'm just guessing. I mean, that would, that would change some things, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would. Not in a positive way. I don't know why they're so against local control. Um, now, this establish a comprehensive communications plan to broadcast economic development progress initiatives and success stories. Is that going to be in cooperation with the Port Authority, or could be, or do you haven't fleshed that out? I think it'll be in cooperation with everybody. Yeah, okay. I think I think we need kind of a central point of sharing the things that are happening within the county. I mean, there's several things in here that are going to require, like, the county to have a either policy or, a, like, so when, when you flush this out, you say, well, the county's we're going to have to change our process so that this this happens. Could, yeah. I think some of it has to depend on, is that even our role? Right. I mean, we're going to have to identify what's really our role. Define. Well, that's why I was... On the question on the land search committee, uh, say they do identify a place that's 160 acres because that's they said that was the least amount they were looking at. Uh, you identify, you talk to the property owner to see if they're even willing to sell. Well, how are you going to talk to make offers when you don't have financing in place? Yeah, and the. 20-year sales tax, we've already spent our portion toward economic development on that for the next 20 years. Yeah, That's think, a shame. I think the $10 million that we've already put into industrial parks from that sales tax probably. Yeah, it's done. I mean, unless the voters pass another and uh, <clears throat> put that out there for economic development. Uh, so. When was the last one passed? 
It's, it took effect in the 2017. We started collecting our first dime in March of 2017. So that's a and the previous board started borrowing money in 2015. I didn't remember and that. didn't spend any. We spent $785,000 for the interest before they spent one dime of it. Put it on the shelf and paid away. Yeah. So the Port Authority could. That was before I got here. Correct. All right. I remember you, that. You had the ability to. <laughs> right. That was good. So, God, that was reckless. And they have about. What, what's in their account right now? About seven hundred fifty thousand, something like that. I'm okay, sure so, uh, and are they allowed to bond or finance? Port Authority is. Yes. Yeah, and how much? And well, what's they the they limitation on that, or do you know? I don't know the answer to that. So, so anyway, really good that we have a Port Authority. That could be a vehicle when this. Exactly park. why we wanted to save it. Yeah. There's only two counties left that have a Port Authority. So I mean that's. Uh, that, that may become a vehicle when this industrial park. Well, it, it needs to because we can't find it. I mean, we're not seeing a return on the investment on the ones we just did, you know, per se. You, well, with the Hills Pet Nutrition, you will see a, a return on that. Well, if you live long enough. No. Ten years is only ten years. And, and the schools are already going to see a return. Well, they are. The 20 mils. They're, they're not likely, most of your tax dollars. They're not anyways. likely to write a check to us. No, they're. <laughs> yeah, they're maybe they're to meet with us. Maybe the yeah. school district can upgrade that road in front of the industrial you had park. enough? I've had enough. You guys had enough? Yeah. I think we've talked. I've I'm good. Yeah. I'm good with it. See what the cities have to say. Yeah, I, you know, I, take it back don't get me wrong. I, I yep. support that they're out looking for additional land for industrial park. I just don't know how you're going to pay for it. That's Question. Yes. Find a kicker. Because you don't get something. Because it, it takes a while to get them shovel ready. Look how long Tom and Oxy owned that one down there. It was just a farmland until the county come in and give them $5 million to get it shovel ready. Well, these are kind of long-term projects. But I will give Tom and Oxy credit for having the vision to go purchase that property, too. Sure. And that's what we're talking about now. It's just nobody's got any money to purchase property. And there's going to be a real uh, story payback on the uh, story having the, uh, no, the turnpike the interchange to Tom and Oxy. You're going to get yeah. a payback on that. Uh, I'll talk to you. Yeah. All right. We good. Anything else, Tom? Well, thank you for the time. Thank, thank you. you. Finalize this, and then we'll be back. We are adjourned. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.